There is a term that I learned a few years ago, about two years ago. This term is Ashkenormativity, which means that so many English-speaking communities in the world uh, take Ashkenazi Judaism as norm and almost completely ignore all other forms of, of Judaism. And perhaps this is the only week where Ashkenomativity is absolutely fine as we watch the news and, uh, and all um, look at the Eastern Europe. Menachem Nochum Tversky of Chernobyl. And yes, you heard it. Chernobyl is the place you may have known, uh, you, you probably know from the nuclear disaster uh, many years ago. But uh, before that, it was, uh, it was a place, uh, by the way, with a, quite a significant Jewish population. So that Menachem Nochem Tversky was born in 1730. Orphaned as a child, Tversky was raised by his uncle, who happened to be a rabbi, and who sent him to be educated in one of the highly acclaimed yeshivot in Lithuania. Yeshiva is the probably highest level of education in the traditional Jewish settings. In 1773, when he was 43 years old, he founded his own, uh, he became a rabbi, and he founded his own Hasidic court in Chernobyl. He was a student of Baal Shem Tov, the founder of Hasidism. He was gifted as a charismatic spiritual leader and one of the earliest, what we would call today, influencers um, who promoted Judaism in Ukraine. He was known as the Magid of Chernobyl. Magid means preacher or skilled narrator of Torah and religious stories. He was the author of the book Me'or Einaim, which means the, of, of the, 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 the light of eyes. Hasidic insights into the weekly Torah portion and Jewish festivals. As modern liberal Jews, we will have many, and I repeat, many disagreements with his theology and his way of conducting Jewish life. However, today I decided to, move, to put my principles aside and learn his Judaism and extract wisdom from his writings. Among many topics, he was intellectually engaged with inequality and theodicy. Why do we all have such different lives? Some are wealthy and some are poor. Some have nice and comfortable lives while others struggle. There are health issues that some have to deal with and others don't. Why? So, Rabbi Nachum taught that the life's primary and ultimate purpose is to recognize God and facilitate and, and to facilitate that goal, God provides each individual with the circumstances that will help them attain that awareness. For some, it's easier to discover God when wealthy. Others find God more easily when they struggle. In one of the commentaries, he writes, Some have wisdom, some strength, some wealth, and some poverty. This is all because God sees with wisdom that each person needs. That person specifically needs that situation to come close to God. Others have other life experiences because those because those are the experiences that they need to become close to God. This is a very challenging theology, for me personally at least, and I cannot take it as the main answer I give to people. So if you come through struggles, it means that, it, it means that to only be close to God. If you, I mean, ask, ask some people who struggle, struggle today and try to comfort them with these words. Still, I would like to remind you that this rabbi lived in the 18th century and was an eyewitness of partitions of Poland, 
a highly turbulent and violent time. Apart from unsettling geopolitics and constantly changing borders, it was also the time when anti-Semitism was not just an occasional ha hate speech from a stranger, but it was rooted in law and society. And there were no and, and there were occasional or sometimes not so occasional, but, but were often pogroms and many false accusations towards Jews or against Jews. Therefore, he knew, this rabbi knew that his community was suffering. And this was his way to bring God to them as a source of support. Sometimes God is with you as a source of support and not as a source of explanation. Rabbi Tversky's book, Me'or Einayim, is a commentary for each Torah portion. So this week we read Torah portion Pekudei. It opens with the summary of the final works of the fi final works of the building of the Mishkan, the portable dwelling place of God on earth. Here is what Rabbi Tversky wrote about it. The Torah should be read to teach us the way we should go in life. So the Torah is the way of life, in other words. Surely, at every time and season, the Torah is presented according to the needs of that particular time and season. Then he brings a parable. And in Judaism, parables is a very often a way of exegesis or the interpretation of Torah. So it is like this. And very often, these parables is about a king or a sovereign. So a sovereign who has wise children who are capable of running the kingdom bring the sovereign more satisfaction than, and joy than if uh, this sovereign to run the kingdom by themselves. Here is how I, I understand this parable. The act of building the Mishkan is a symbol of people taking control over the world. God is still present by taking a less active part of everyday life of, of the people. So before, God parted the sea. God was there physically to give the, the Ten Commandments or the Torah, depending on your beliefs. Or, and God was there physically to help uh, Jews to escape from Egypt. But the moment Jews built Mishkan, built the temple, God is no longer everywhere. God is limited. God is still present, by, but taking less active part in everyday life of the people. We are the children of Eternal One, and we should be able to conduct harmonious life ourselves. A few portions ago, God commanded Israelites to build the tabernacle, saying, Make for me a sanctuary, and I will dwell within them. Rabbi Tversky noticed that it is not written that God will dwell in it, in the tabernacle, but it is written, I will dwell within them, within the people. Therefore, the Chernobyl rabbi concludes that God's intention was that each person would be a tabernacle, a dwelling place of God. Then he writes, but isn't it impossible for a person to be a tabernacle of God while the evil inclination is within this person? A person should burn the evil from, from within, and thus it could be that God will reside inside the person. I find this commentary very moving. In a time of hardship and geo geopolitical turbulence of the 18th century Chernobyl, the rabbi asks his followers to become better people, kinder and fight evil inclination within themselves. You may not be able to change the strong forces that cause chaos in the world around you, but you can become a better person yourself and make a difference for people around you. There is not much left of the Chernobyl community of today, apart from the name and apart from that place that we call now Chernobyl, Ukraine. 
But there is a, there is a nigun, a wordless melody that I learned to be written by the Chernobyl Rebbe, Rabbi Menachem Nachum Tversky. And I would like to end this um, Dvar Torah, this little thing, by learning this nigun. I don't know if it's true. It may not be the Chernobyl nigun. It may not be written. But this is how I learned it. And this is how I know it. Just repeat after me. The words are very simple. Nai, nai, nai. That's it. Nai, 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 nai. First part. Let's try to sing it together. This was the first part. The second part. Try it. No, it's not going to work. Let's try. Let's try it together. Day, 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 day